All right, YouTube, this is take two of my earlier stream. I realized that with my previous live stream, um, there was no audio. And I was made aware by a few friends through text messages and messages on Facebook and so on. Um, and I really didn't realize until close to the end of the stream. So you can only imagine how annoyed I can be at the moment. But um, I since then figured out what was the cause for the no audio and I fixed it. So I can see down right underneath the video for my stream, there is some sound coming through. Um, with that being said, this is take two of my earlier stream. So this is the hilt that I am going to be going over a little more um, in depth with the review, as well as the breakdown. I will be taking this apart and showing you um, the insides and what I used and where I got it. Um, so just to start uh, with a previous video that I put out last week, I believe it was, I did talk about blade plug and how it is spring loaded. Um, I really do love this thing. This is just awesome. It's like one of my favorite blade plugs that I have. Um, I got this from the Saber Armory. It's a one inch um, spring loaded blade plug and it fits really um, it fits really well in here. I also did get a 36 inch bullet tipped blade um, thick walled blade from the Saber Armory as well. Um, that is off camera, but that was the blade that I was using in my previous video with this. Um, so yeah, uh, like I, as I was saying before in my previous stream that you guys didn't hear, um, this comes with, uh, it doesn't come as you see, it does come with um, two sets of grips. It comes with six, um, a set of six grips with um, rivet caps. These are not actual rivets. Um, it comes with the, the six for the Force Awakens, the Last Jedi um, configuration, as well as the Cobalt D-Ring, which I honestly feel is the best looking D-Ring out there. Um, and another set of grips, it comes with seven for A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back configuration. Um, and it also comes with a more basic D-ring. To me, it just looks like um, uh, like one piece of, I guess, like sheet metal folded over a D-ring and just has one hole to be screwed into the pommel. You can see the pommel itself has um, some words on it, etched in, either etched or stamped in. Um, but yeah, you can you can kind of see the G here and the X on the other side. So it says Graflex going right across. Um, comes with a an actual glass, like a see-through glass eye. And um, comes with two uh, red but um, red power buttons. Uh, I guess like if you want to set it up for the the Empire Strikes Back configuration, where there was two buttons, one on the front and one on the um, one on the front and one on the back. Um, what else? As uh, Graflex stamped all the way across on the clamp and. Unlike some of the other Graflex kits, um, I think it's the Graflex 2.0 or is the 2.5. I'm not particularly sure which one, but the grip section, the bottom section of the, the hilt, screws on. This particular hilt, this is the 89 Sabres Graflex that I bought via Corban. 
So this one has a J lock system where you just open up, like flip up the arm. Oh, there's clamp. Um, you flip up the arm and then you push up a little bit, you turn and then you pull. Okay, so I'm not going to get to that just yet. Um, this kit also does come with two clamp cards. No, a total of three clamp cards, excuse me. Comes with um these two clamp cards, the circuit board clamps, and one bubble strip. Where like how um Darth Vader had the bubble strip on his lightsaber just going straight down. Um I did, however, slightly damage my clip my um clamp a little bit because I realized when I first got it and I was trying to put in um the circuit cards that I would close it like you see it is now, but the circuit cards kept slipping out. And I thought like, are the cards too small or is the, um, the clamp, you know, too loose. So in order to, um, you can actually tighten the clamp itself. Like when, when it's, um, off of the hilt, you can pinch the, these two sides together, which will kind of release this washer. And there's kind of like a square. If you can see this lever arm that's sticking out right there, um, there's a square piece that fits inside of the clamp that um, when it sticks out, you can just like, you know, twist the whole arm, either left or right, to loosen it or tighten it as you see fit. Um, yeah, so I thought, you know, doing that would help, but it didn't. Like I tightened it and then I had an issue with like actually closing the clamp because it was way too tight. So instead of um, tightening the clamp, I kind of thought to bend these two pieces inward. And I was using um, pliers to do that and the pliers slipped a few times. So now there's you know, some scratching, some, some nicks like right in the clamp side, which to me, it just adds personality to the clamp, you know, makes it a little worn. Um, but I did warp the clamp itself. So there's some spacing here. There's a lot of spacing here. And there's a little bit of spacing here. So other than that little bit, the clamp is fine. It works perfectly. Um, and there's not too much damage to it. Um, so yeah, this is your power button, your red power button. There's a tactile switch that's underneath, so you can hear the click. Probably you can hear the click. Um, this right here is your auxiliary switch, and then you can probably hear the click with this. Got your bunny ears. Um, again, your glass eye, this is actually see-through. I know some kits that come with the glass eye, um, that acts as the blade retention. Um, this, however, does not, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and you have your four brass pins, your short brass pins. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with these. Um, the screwdriver kit that I use does have um, a, a hex key that you can take it that you can take these out, but the size that should have fit over these doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And I went on the Graflex shop and I was reluctant in paying $20 for something that's about this size and length to take these pins out. But you know, I, I grit my teeth and I just bought it and it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So I legitly wasted 20 bucks. Um, I think they might have given me a refund for that. It just said that I could keep the, 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 the tool, even though it doesn't work. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, I ended up buying a pair of needle nose pliers and am now able to take out the pins. But they are somewhat delicate 
So the um the pliers have slipped quite a few times and now the pins are a bit worn as you can probably see here. They're they're like really kind of worn. So it is what it is. You know, I do plan on buying a new set for like six bucks. It's not that expensive. Um but other than that, this is the configuration that I have it in. I decided to make the, the Force Awakens again because I like the, the grips. The grips to me with the rivets have a little more personality as opposed to just being straight solid grips. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the outside. Now it's time to go on, show you what's on the inside. So oh, again, with the J-Lock system, you just push up a little bit, twist it all the way to the left, and then that just unlocks it. All right, this to the side. Here we go. So I'm using a rubber band. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm using a rubber band to basically hold the um the profit board down because I was having a bit of um an issue with the settings that I had this board set at. So I had the volume set at like 1600 and the clash threshold was around 2.5 or three. And I'm not entirely too sure of how much space is in between the speaker and the inside of the pommel, but however much space there was, the reverberation would bounce back and hit the board causing false clashes. So I had to lower the volume and I had to um, kind of increase the clash threshold in order to get those false clashes to not happen. And I just decided to like leave the rubber band on there just to keep the board secure. But um, I previously had, or I still have, I should say, a Profi 1.5 board. This one is a Profi 2.2. Um, the 1.5, it was, yeah, I had a bit of a, um, I could, I guess you could say a slow moment. Um, I didn't realize that I had not soldered a particular board I was supposed to solder to. Um, so I thought I had gotten a faulty board from the POC store. Um, so I had followed, uh, I'm sorry, I had followed um, Frederick's, or I actually looked at Frederick's um, model on his website for the Profi 1.5 board. And, you know, I set the parameters to what I was using. Um, I'm Right now I'm using a, Tricree LED, a royal blue, blue, white LED for this build. And I set in the parameters. I looked at the, the model that it gave. And instead of following that model, when I went to go solder the board, I ended up looking at the actual user manual for the 1.5 board. Um, and it, sh it either showed or I misinterpreted that manual to see that the negative lines for the power switch and the auxiliary switch were supposed to be spliced into the battery negative. So when I did that and I pulled the kill key, it was not working. Like my LED was just flashing. And then once I hit the reset button and the boot button at the same time, it just killed it and nothing, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't turn on nothing. Um, and then I saw on Carl's website, um, the Saber Armory, he was having a uh, group buy for the Profi 2.2 that was coming out. So I was like, all right, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to jump on that bandwagon. I am out like 60 bucks. So let me just get on this. It was like $45, $48 or so. Um I get this board and then like I go back on Frederick's website this time to look at the um 
the diagram and everything, follow that so I can desolder that board so I can put this one on. And then as I was doing that, I realized there was a pad around here, around this section on the 1.5 that I did not solder to. And that pad was used for the batter, for the switch negatives of the power button and the auxiliary switch. So when I saw that, I despliced those two negatives from the battery negative, um, soldered everything back on this side, and then I soldered the the switch negatives to the proper board, and it worked. So my inexperience. You know, with my inexperience, I realized that I had soldered to the wrong board or to the wrong pad, I should say. Um, but yeah, now I have another board. It worked. And that's going to be used in my next build, which, as I said in my previous video, I'm not going to mention here. You guys are just going to have to wait and see. Um, with. So, yeah, everything that I use for this build um, again, I used a royal blue, blue, white LED. The white is for the flash on clash. Um, the, I used an 18650 lithium ion battery that I got from the custom saber shop, as well as the, the tricrete LED and the heat sink. So those three things, plus the charger for the battery. I got those things from the custom saber shop. Um, pretty much everything else. Um, the kill key, the brass kill key, um, the 2.1 millimeter recharge port, um, the blade plug, the actual blade, the chassis, which is a goth 3D printed chassis. This is the, um, the 89 Sabres Graphlex variant one edition. Um, I got those from the Saber Armory, as well as the speaker. The speaker is a two watt, twenty eight millimeter OD bass speaker. Um, it is pretty loud. When I have it, I believe I have it set to. I think the volume is at either thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred, and it is still loud. Um, so yeah, all, those are all the parts that I got from the Saber Armory, and yeah, that's that's pretty much just the parts. Um. If you guys can see this right here, that is a that's basically a homemade retention screw for my chassis. Like the chassis, um, it was it wasn't extremely loose, but it wasn't a secure fit. So I wanted to make sure that nothing would like cause it to like kind of swing around or rattle around. So I decided to um make myself retention screw um and the size of the screw that i'm using is a 32 by 3 8 inch screw the way i did that i just took that screw put it in here and then screwed it all the way in until like it was securely fit onto the chassis and then i marked it off with a pen and i used my rotary tool and cut off the um, the rest of the the screw and then i took um my rotary tool again kind of scored the top a little bit and then took a rat tail file and then just you know filed out a bit of a channel i guess you could say for um a flathead screwdriver to fit into and it works fine. So. Come on. There we go. That's it. This little thing keeps my chassis nice and secure. So after I put this in, I am going to proceed in showing you guys the rest of the hilt. Just going to break it down, show you how I take it up. My retention screw just fell. Okay. 
Right. No, I will deal with that later. Anyways, I did see a video. This guy was going through how he took it, um, how he took this apart step by step. Um, I guess he had a specific way of how he took it apart. I don't know if that's the textbook way of taking um, a Graflex replica apart, but the way that I do it, I kind of do it out of order a bit, um, but it still comes apart just fine. It goes back together just fine. So um, the way that I start, I start by taking the glass eye off. So uh, depending on your kit, if, again, this would either be your retention screw or this is gonna be like an actual see-through glass eye. Um, again, mine is actually see-through, but it is, it is a bit snug in there and you'll see why in a set. So you just unscrew this and take that off and be careful because if your glass eye is not a retention screw, it will have a spring. All right, so I don't know what purpose the spring serves, but yeah, there you got that spring and then there's the actual glass eye, it's actually see-through. Uh, next, you would want to take off your power button. And you just, this is also an another snug piece. There we go. Screw that off, and that comes off. <clears throat> so I did see a video where um, the guy that was disassembling his Graflex looked at the inside of the power button and it showed the pads that you would actually solder to. And he was saying how, you know, like repeatedly disassembling his graph flex was a bit nerve wracking because when unscrewing the power switch, you're also wrapping the cords or the, um, the wires up. And anybody that knows anything about wires is the more you wrap it or um, the more, yeah, the more it's wrapped, the faster it, it's going to take for them to, you know, like break down and whatnot. So I'm actually grateful that this particular hilt or this particular kit came with like a power switch board with a tactile switch. So this right here, this little guy is a tactile switch. It's pretty low profile. It's really nice. And this, you'll see that power switch or that power board in just a moment. Um, but continuing down with your beer tab, you just loosen it up by swinging it around and then you just unscrew it. And now some kits, this piece is one, is one solid piece, but with my particular kit, it's three separate pieces. So you have the actual screw, then you have the actual beer tab, and then you have a washer just right there. So if you have this particular kit, just make sure all three stays together. That way, like you don't have to go crazy looking for it. Um, all the while you're doing this, you kind of wanna you're gonna wanna kind of keep the the retention screw, which is this guy right here. You would want to keep that in to like try and keep everything lined up. Um, from this point, you're gonna wanna take out this, what appears to be a rivet. It's actually a screw that goes all, sorry, that goes straight down. There's an inner channel that you can actually see right there. Pretty much just unscrew that. And that holds your bunny ears in place. Oh, come on. There we go. Now this is the screw with a rivet top to make it look like a rivet. It is pretty slick. I just dropped it. But yeah, this um this screw keeps your bunny ears in place. You got the little slit down here at the bottom, rivet top. Boom. Um now the way that you take your bunny ears out, you just 
pinch the two ears and then you wiggle it forward and then you feed it through this little slot. If it doesn't, oh, if it doesn't work the first time, you can pinch the bunny ears at the back and then just pull it out. But you have to be careful because there is an inner channel. If you can see right here, there's an inner channel that has one side has threads, the other side doesn't. Um, I like how they did that. So is that I assume it's so that whoever's taking this apart isn't screw isn't unscrewing the threads for days. Um, but be careful that you're not pinching the bunny ears for too long, and then you have this at a certain orientation where that inner channel just slides right out. So just to make sure that I don't lose this, I'm going to just like screw this in a little bit. Yeah, there's your bunny ears and there's your rivet screw. Um, from this point, you're gonna wanna take whatever tool you use to, to take these brass pins out. At this point, you're gonna wanna take these out or, or you could save that for your second to last step. But me, I'm gonna just take these out so I can avoid the headache later. And be careful that like you don't drop them. They are really small. And if you have like hardwood floors that these brass pins can like, I don't know, disappear on, then you're, SOL. Yeah. Got that one pin. Over, take out the next. All right, now there is a brass um, ring kind of thing. You can see this tab right here. There's also another tab right there. That kind of runs straight across, kind of comes down in the middle here, and then continues on to the other side. Um, you're you're going to see that in just a moment. I am about 90% of the way done with this. All right, now I got all the pins out, all the pins are out and to the side. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is grab a small hex key. I would say uh, 1.5 would be just fine. You have two screws, one here, and then the other is here, right across, they're right across from each other. Take those out. There's one. There's two. And once you take those out, you have this. This ring pretty much keeps the inner core of your Graflex Saber stationary, um, or at least keeps it from falling in. Um, yeah, after that, you can basically just take out the screw, your retention screw, because that is no longer needed. And then you can push up a little bit. Actually, no, you pull down a little bit because we got to take out 
the auxiliary switch. All right, so you take pull down a little bit, and then you should be able to slide that right out. Then you can push up in order to get this brass tab out. And this is what I was talking about. So it goes straight across from the, um, the brass pins. The top pins are, they pretty much go on top of this. And then you got that one tab going straight down the middle, right underneath the retention screw. Now at this point, you wanna be very careful taking the core out because if you can see this little metal plate right on top of the tactile switch, that does pop off. Okay, it is not glued on. It's um, it's there's pretty much like tabs underneath, um, that kind of hook under the the space that's in between the tactile switch body, I would say, and the the power switch board, um. But you have to be real careful when taking this out because if the tactile switch gets caught on the lip of um, this hole that's on the, the upper body, it will pull that whole cover off and it is very annoying to get it back on. So what I do, I kind of make sure that it's lying flat and I rotate the the body a little bit so that the and so that the tactile switch is basically now on the inside of the outer shell and then from there i just like slowly pull it out and there you go that's how you fully dismantle the top piece now this is Power switch board, or that's what I call it. Please forgive me if I don't know the proper terminology for certain parts. Um, and this right here is your tactile switch for your auxiliary. And it has this little plunger where it lets you push down at the top. Got this little spring to act as, to act as resistance and also push it back up. But if you push it down, you can hear the click. Um, and yeah, that's where your auxiliary switch fits into. Yep. So this is the inner core of the Graphlex hilt. Again, this is the 89 Sabres Graphlex. So for those that have been on their website and have seen the stuff that they have they um you would know that there is excuse me that there is a shroud i guess like a, a copper shroud or a golden shroud or what have you um that threads on here that's why there's threading all down on this part right here um i bought this again i bought this through Corbanth, and i had a couple of email exchanges with the person that I bought this from. And he said that they felt that shroud was not needed. It served no purpose whatsoever. Um, and that it was just there, you know, for like looks and whatnot. But I honestly feel it does serve some kind of purpose because with the amount of space that's in between the the chassis itself and the lower half of the the whole um, hilt, there's some space so that like, if you're holding the top and you're holding the bottom, you can you can seriously like wobble the whole bottom section. So he said that um, like all the kits that they bought, both um, Darth Vader hilts and um, Graflex hilts, they don't, when whenever us being the consumer buys a hilt, they don't, send out the um they don't send out those shrouds so they have boxes full of both the graphic shrouds and the darth vader shrouds um but he said that if i just pay for the shipping and handling he'll just send me a shroud for the graphics for free um so i do plan on buying or yeah 
buying a shroud very soon because to me personally I like I really liked how the shroud looked with all of this together. Um but yeah, other than that, that's this is pretty much it. Now I'm just gonna let this kind of hang for a little bit so I, I can unscrew this middle section here so I can show you guys the rest of the parts. But you also have to be careful because um there is a channel as you can see where the wires go through, but if you're not really careful enough, and for those that did see my previous stream, the one that had no audio, um, the positive for my switch was cut. And that was probably due to the fact that the amount of times that I've actually took this apart, um, I guess like look inside or whatever, it was getting caught and getting scratched. So you gotta, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna wanna make sure that you're careful with that. And right now I'm having some kind of issue. There we go. Alright. Now here's my LED module. All right, so again, this is a royal blue, blue, white. And <clears throat> um, I also got these three resistors, if you can see these right here. I'll try and bring it a little closer. These three resistors I also got from uh, the custom saber shop. So the resistors, these two blue ones are connected to my blue LEDs, and this little red one is connected to my white LED. And I see here that the white on my, for my negative on my LED is a little stripped, which this is extremely annoying because I'm gonna have to fix that later. Um, but yeah, so the two blue, LED resistors, um, seeing as those two diodes use or have the same voltage, um, I got the same resistors for both. These two are three ohm, one watt resistors, and the white LEDs um, voltage is slightly different than the two blue ones. So the red one is a one ohm two watt resistor, and it was just yeah, that's pretty much the only difference between those two. Um, but I wanted to keep the negatives, or I wanted to like to make sure that I know or that I knew which line was going to where. I kept the negative lines for my LEDs the same as the colors that they're that they're being used for. So the white is for my negative white LED and the two blues are for my negative blue LEDs. Three red um the three red wires in the middle are for all three positives going straight down. But yeah, this is this is the build. I'm gonna have the LED pointed away from the camera because I don't wanna blind you guys. And just gonna do a little demonstration. All right. It belongs to me. So right now there are some false clashes, which I don't, I'm not particularly sure why those are happening. But yeah, this is pretty much my build. All right, and now just to reassemble, basically just slide the LED back. Gotta make sure that the wires don't get caught. 
Yeah, you slide the LED back in. And then making sure that the channel, um, the wires for your switch are not caught. Um, I hold, I try to hold like all the the wires for the negative, the positives and the negatives off on the side for my switches, as you can kind of see here. If this would cooperate, yeah. Just like try and line up the threads. Sometimes this must be very difficult. There we go. Now I'm having some false activations, so I am going to reinstall my kill key so that doesn't happen again. And then just twist everything closed. There we go. And then now you just pull this out a little bit and then you just stick it right back into the channel that it's and it goes in. Now here I am going to put interesting. I am going to put the retention screw for my chassis back in so this isn't wobbling all over the place. Now I actually do need this. That's secured. Okay. Then from here, what you want to do is pretty much just backtrack. So you start by putting in, by putting on the shroud first, making sure your wires don't get caught. And again, this is also at a point where you want to be very careful with your tactile switch. You don't want that to get caught when um you're putting the you're putting the hilt back in or the um the inner core. You don't want that tactile switch to get caught because again, it is really annoying to put that um that plate back on because it's not just um it's not just like one piece, um, one tactile piece just sticking out. It's like a little plate with the nub that sticks out of the the metal, um, the silver plate on top of something that pretty much looks like that copper piece. So you would have a piece that goes on top of that copper piece, and then you have the plate that holds that piece on top. That's what the tactile switch is like. And it is very, seeing as it's so small, it is extremely annoying to get back on. But um, at this point, you want to put your auxiliary switch back in. And then let's see if I could do it again. Kind of shimmy it up. And it did not work. Well, at this point, you kind of want to fiddle around with it to... out. Ah. Take that out for a second. Back up. Now you're going to take your your ring tab or whatever this is. Put this back in first. Push that down. Push it down enough so that like you can act 
so that you can have space to get come on Awesome. All righty. Now, once you have this tab in and you have it all lined up with the hole for your retention screw, you can take that screw and put it in. That way, this holds this copper tab in place. You don't have to screw it all the way in. You just need it in far enough that it'll keep that plate in place. It'll keep your inner core lined up for the most part. And um, yeah, so that way it's just that much easier for you to put everything back together. Um, so then, yes, from this point, you're going to want to start putting in your brass pins. You can put the top two first and then worry about the other two later. Or you can put all four pins in at the at, you know, at this time. Damn it, I just had to say something. Right now, my pen fell, but I see it. Third time's the charm. There we go. All right, so in my previous video or in my previous stream, Mega Tooth, I think it's Mega Sith. Um, he, again, I apologize if I butchered your name, I'm sorry. Uh, he commented saying that he was, um, viewing my live stream while at an event he was at during halftime, which I am very appreciative for. He is one of the, um, one of the few that I saw some of his content and it also helped me out considerably um, with doing this as well. More on the more on the programming of the board side than actual soldering. Um, but I do thank him for viewing my other stream. Um, for all of you guys on the open source boards page on Facebook that helped me out. I thank you guys. Um, but I really have to give a lot of thanks to my mom for definitely believing in me and, you know, like definitely telling me that I can do this and definitely just like showing all the support that she could um, even though she's not really into Star Wars like that. But I really am grateful for everybody that helped me out with this because if I didn't have none of like none of you guys supporting me, I, I really wouldn't have done this or it would have been a lot later that I would have done this. So thank all of you guys. I thank all of you. Um, but yeah, so you put that back in and then like just double check your auxiliary switch before you go any farther. Yep, it works. Alrighty. Now from here, 
Um, you're gonna want to put your black ring back on. So make sure that you have the right side going on. Add in, and then you take your 1.5 X key with the screws. That back on. Then you got that. And after you put that back on, I uh, want to unscrew this. So yeah, again, with this channel, half of it has threads and the other half doesn't. So you want to make sure that the part that does not have threads is facing upwards. Okay, so once you find out which side does not have the threads, um, you hold your bunny ears accordingly, as well as the hilt accordingly, pinch, and then you just flip it through the slot. And then you line up the holes. Boom. You line up the holes. And then you take your screw, drop it in. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And you screw. I want to see the going. Is it lined up? I don't think I lined it up right. Oh, I did. Okay, it's just taking forever. There you go. Make sure that's nice and tight. Your bunny ears are snug. They're not going anywhere. All right. Then at this point, all right. Then at this point, you can pretty much remove this um your retention screw if you like. Uh, you don't really need that in at the moment. Um. All right, now you take your ear tab and screw, and you want to put that in, and then you screw the you screw it in a little bit, and then you start to rotate the ear tab itself. You know, like the, the more it goes around, the tighter the screw actually gets. So when it gets to the part where it's like really nice and taut, you just push the beer tab right over this hole kind of lining up the inside, the inside lines along with the inside of the lip of the hilt. Power switch or your power button. And you like you that on. Double check to see if it's good. Yep, we're all good. Take your glass eye. Back on. Now this one sometimes is a little tricky, or at least for me it is. Um, I think that I, I'm screwing it on and it doesn't move. So I'm unscrewing until I feel it kind of click in onto the threads. And then I just screw it on. Make sure it's nice and nice and secure. Boom. That's done. Open up your clamp. Put that on. Line it up. 
close and you're all done. Now, just to make sure everything is working and that the LED is still working, I'm gonna grab my blade. Here is the 36 inch thick walled bullet tip blade. You can see right there. Now, me personally, I think like someone seriously needs to figure out a way to make these polycarbonate tubes have the tip be one solid with the tip so that it's all one solid piece so that there isn't there's no seam. Because when this is on, it looks good up until this point, and then it just kind of looks weird. That's just my personal opinion. But um, to insert the both the blade plug and the blade, you pinch your bunny ears, and then you insert the blade. Take your blade retention screw. Add on. Whoa. All right. That's nice and snug. Now, I do have the kill key in still, so I'm going to take this off. Now, the best thing about the profit board. Best thing about the profi board, for those that don't know, you can play music from your lightsaber. You know, if um if your your font has any tracks on it, you can play sounds. You can you have um force sounds and whatever other type of sounds other than your basic lightsaber stuff. Um, me personally, I opted to take out the force sounds because I don't I don't like that as a, it's just a personal preference I don't like that but um the music though is so awesome it's just so beautiful but that's not the best part the best part You still have everything. You have all your sounds. You have all the sounds and all the features and everything along with that. So you can play your music and you still have the ignition. You still have the idle hum, your smooth swing, which is what that is called. Um, with the profi board, um, there is basically a one-to-one -one ratio, ratio for motion sensitivity, as opposed to other sound boards, you know, I guess like a couple of years ago, where um, there would be pre-recorded sounds and you would have to swing. So. But this is my saber. This is my first ever build. And I am extremely satisfied with it. You know, there's there's still little things here and there that I could better. But other than that, I am extremely satisfied with this build. Again, you got the shine through with the glass on. This is like that extra icing on the cake for me. It's just so cool. But yeah. 
to have to wait for me to show you what my second build is going to be. But until then, I'm glad that you guys watched. Um, thank you for partaking in my journey. Thank you for your support. Um, you know, any questions or comments is greatly appreciated. And I welcome it all. Uh, you know, I try my best to um, reply to any comments that I get. And, you know, again, I, I appreciate it all. I really do. Um, if you enjoyed this stream, like, subscribe, um, share with your friends, you know, like any of those, any of you who feel that there's someone that you know that may want to get into something like this, be as encouraging as you can be. You know, this is something that can be very unsettling, especially for someone who doesn't have any experience and all the support that is given is worth it. Um, but yeah, uh, again, like and subscribe, share with your friends, share with your family, um, hit that bell, hit that notification bell, because I will try my best to bring videos out, um, you know, as often as I can. So just keep a lookout for those. And anything else you want to know, just comment. And I'll get to you as as soon as I can. But in the meantime, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.